So in today's setup guides, we're looking at Kronos, which is a Sega Saturn emulator. And this emulation setup guide is going to be for Windows PC. So what is the Sega Saturn? I'm sure a lot of you retro fans out there realize that the Sega Saturn was around the same time as the first Sony PlayStation and the Nintendo 64. So in this setup guide, I'm going to show you how to install this emulator, how to configure your controllers, which file extensions we need for our games and other files required, and we're also going to look at video settings. So this is going to be pretty much a full setup guide, including how to save and load your games using its file save and load state support system so if you want to learn more about this awesome emulator check out this video Okay then, so before I start today's setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like, it really helps my channel out a lot, plus it gets you up to date retro emulation content as I upload it every day. So we're looking at Kronos today, or Kronos, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, but this is a very, very good Sega Saturn emulator for Windows. So I'm going to leave the link in my description for this one as always, and we're going to head over to the website. So the website I've got for this is actually in French, but we're gonna translate this. So for me, I'm using Google Chrome. If we go up to those three vertical lines at the top, just go down to translate, English, and there we go. So if we just scroll down to the bottom, we're gonna find two versions of this to download. So if you're running a 32-bit computer, just download the 32-bit version. For me, I'm using a 64-bit computer. If you're unsure of what type of computer you're running, just go to your search bar and just type in system information. And if you go under system information, you'll find under system type, which type of processor or computer you're using. As it says for me, times 64 means I'm using a 64-bit computer. So we're gonna close out with here and just download, like I say, the version which is suitable for your computer. So 64 bits. Now, while this is downloading, let me just say this emulator is gonna to set to many different file extensions, including .q, .bin, .iso, even .zip. So it's pretty versatile in terms of the games you're going to put in it. And if you've got real physical Sega Saturn discs, you can also put those into a CD-ROM drive. And this emulator is going to emulate your physical disc collection, which is always a bonus. So what I'm going to do for this is just right click on my desktop, go to new folder. And I'm going to just call this one Saturn, but you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. And I'm gonna drag that zip folder inside of that Saturn folder I've just created. Double left click. And what we're gonna do is just extract this zip folder. So right click on it. I'm using WinRAR extract here. Okie dokes. And what I'm gonna do first of all is just create a shortcut for the emulator itself to actually get into it quicker. So if we right click on the Kronos or Kronos.exe, this is the file which opens up the emulator. Just right click on it and just go to show more options. And from here, you can go to send to desktop create shortcut. So if we look on the desktop now, we can now go straight into that. But before we do that, I need to put in a couple of folders. So what I'm gonna do is drag my BIOS file, which is Saturn underscore BIOS.bin. I'm gonna just drag that one into that Saturn folder just to tidy things up and I've also got a copy of my game which is Bug and Bug as you can see is a European version and it's in the .bin.q format so I'm going to drag my game inside of that Saturn folder so everything's nice and neat everything's now in one place okay so let's open up Kronos for the first time so double left click on the shortcut and I'm gonna just maximize this. Now, first of all, we need to put a BIOS file in place. And like I said, the BIOS file required for this one needs to be titled Saturn underscore BIOS dot bin. And what we're gonna do is just link this up. So we're gonna to go to file and down to settings and BIOS file path. And if you just left click on the button just here, 
we can then select that BIOS file. So just search for this one. And here it is. So double left click Saturn underscore BIOS stop in. And as we can see, the path of this is now put into place. And once that file path is put into place, just check enable BIOS emulation. So next thing we need to do for this is configure a controller. So I'm using my awesome Google Stadia controller for this one. And I'm gonna just go over to that input tab. And under input, we got SDL joystick interface. If it doesn't work for you at all, what I'm about to do, then it's worth checking out and selecting DirectX input interface. But SDL works fine for me with my Google Stadia. So I'm gonna keep this one checked. And under port one, we got a selection here of which controller for Sega Saturn you'd like to emulate. Now, for me, playing the game Bug, obviously we're gonna need a pad for this, so I'm gonna select pad, and I'm gonna just click on this little wrench, edit configuration. So after you clicked on that wrench, we're gonna find a picture of a Sega Saturn controller, as you can see here, and all we need to do is just left click on each one of these buttons on the Saturn controller, and map it out with your controller. Like I was saying, I'm using a Google Stadia controller. If I click on up on the D-pad, and then press up on my Stadia D-pad, you'll get a little tick saying that that's now been mapped. And we'll do it with left and right and down and start. Now, on the Sega Saturn controller, you've got six buttons and most conventional controllers nowadays only have four main action buttons. So. If you've got enough buttons, then obviously map it out on your controller. If not, it doesn't matter if a couple of these are left over. And don't forget your bumpers. The Sega Saturn controller had two of these left and right bumpers. So once you map that out with your controller, just go to close. And we're going to go to OK. Now, next thing I need to say is if we go to files, like I was saying just a minute ago, we've got the option to use physical media. So if you've got some rare Sega Saturn games or whatever, then you can go to open CD-ROM and you can mount your image or rather your disc into this section here, press OK, and that should boot up your physical Saturn games. For me, I'm gonna be using a .q file for this. So to open your images, uh, like I say, this emulator accepts .isos, .sips, and .bin and Q. So I'm going to go to File, Eject, Load ISO, and just locate your game folder. As we know just a minute ago, I put my game folder of bug inside of that Saturn folder I created. Now, if you've got bin and Qs, the one to select to actually open the game is actually .q. So just highlight it and press Open. And for a full screen on this emulator, we can either press Alt and Enter simultaneously, which bring us into a full screen and exit full screen, or we can go up to the top just here and full screen, we can do it from there. So to go back into windowed mode, I just press all and enter together and that's taken us out of full screen mode. Now we can also use save states and load states on this emulator. So for example, if I start a game and what I'm going to do is just go to file and if I go down to save state to file and I'm going to give this save a name. So I'm going to call this one bug and .yss is the file extension for the save system on this emulator. And you can save that file wherever you want. So I'm gonna just leave it to default and press save. So if I play my game just a little bit longer, what I'm gonna to do to load to where I've just saved it is go back to file, 
load from file and from here I can then locate that bug file that I've just created and here it is right at the bottom so left click open and there we go we are now back to the point where we saved it so we're going to look at some video settings now so we can actually make these Saturn games look a lot better if we go back into settings and you'll find the little wrench at the top just go to the videos tab and first of all you've got an option here to select to start your games in full screen rather than manually pressing alt and enter simultaneously so if you want to boot up your games and go directly into start in full screen just check this one here now upscale filter we can upscale these games but that's down to preference just experiment with these three options you'll have i'm going to go for the bottom one which is two times brz and under embellishment filter this is some more enhancements we can use to make games look better i'm going to select by linear and under window size we can make this into 1080p or up to 1080p so up to you again if you want to select 1080p and under mesh mode just turn this to improved and if you want to see wireframes in action all those polygon goodness then go to wireframe and select on let's check this out so okay and here's your wireframe we're going to go back to settings video wireframe off okay and here we go we are back into bug and as you can see the video enhancements have really taken place with this one if we go back up the settings again up to that little wrench go to video and under window resolution we're going to go to integer scaling okay and again if you now go into full screen with this all and enter it will look a little bit better it's not entirely full screen but that what i've just applied just cleans up pixelation so all and enter again to go back into window mode and back to the wrench back to video and under window resolution this time we're going to use stretch to window so some of your games are going to look a little bit stretch as it says stretch and some of them might look good for using this option some of them might look bad but we're going to try this so all and enter Now if there's a specific game that you want to check out on this emulator and you're not sure if it might work or it might not work there's a really easy way around to find out if you go up to help and compatibility list this is going to open up web browser and just translate this to english or whatever language you speak and if you go to sega saturn emulators compatibility list to chronos or chronos you will then find what works and what doesn't so if we take a look at this list here playable and perfect are the ones to look for if they're in red below or not tested it's quite likely your games are going to crash or not even going to load so as we can see there's a lot more green than there is any other so it's a very good emulator and it's uh, very fully supportive over at most games in the saturn library so that's it for today's setup guide for Sega Saturn. Like I said at the start of the video, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like. It helps my channel out. Plus it gets you up to date emulation content, which I pretty much upload every day. Also check me out on social media. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. And be sure to check out my long list of retro emulation setup guides, which are in my playlist, of course. Until next time, stay retro.